And this is like ever since I've been a, I love my family, but y'all know I love y'all. So um when I first started coming here, I realized I said, Dad, I need a church where I can actually work in it and use my gifts. And for all of y'all, y'all don't know what your gifts is, please find out and tap into that because God is dependent on y'all to fulfill your purpose. Because somebody's dependent on you to fulfill your purpose. Whatever God has given you is your gifts. So as I got here, I realized I love sunflowers. It's a sunflower that's on the side of this building. That's why I know that was the shit that God told me to be here. And I asked somebody, I can't remember specifically who I asked, and I was like, who planted that one sunflower seed? It's like, you don't see no sunflower seed here. So the next time, I was like, you know what? Today I'm going to join church. And when I joined church, my heel worked. So then I was like, all right, I got plastic in the car. That's all right. So then I was like, you know what, God, what am I doing? Show me what I'm missing. How am I missing the mark? And he was like, you're not paying your tithe like you're supposed to. And if you paying me last, you're not paying me first. Mm -hmm. So the moment I was about to bring my money to, to the church, next thing I know, my, my dress malfunctioned. So I'm like, Lord, it's always something. But he said he didn't realize that adversity is going to come when I'm trying to get you aligned with me. So my story started, I joined the military when I was 30 years old. Now let me start right there. But I realized before I do anything, I like to pray for myself. Because I don't want you just to heal me, I want you to get a flesh that's within me. Not my, my, not my flesh, but the spirit that's within me that lets you know that God is working through me. Not because of satisfying for man, because man doesn't have a place to put you at. But you have to tap into who you are and realize that God has called you to something bigger than what man has appointed you to be. So if y'all can close your eyes and bow your head. And as the disciples asked Jesus, Jesus, how do we pray? He said, Our Father. Yes. Which are in heaven. Which are in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive our trespasses as those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all sin and evil. Father God, I come to you right now just saying thank you for allowing me to just wake up and be in your presence again. Father, I realize that I have a calling on my life, and each and every individual in here has one too. Yes. You have a point. He said, before I placed you here, I knew you in your mother's womb before you even got here. So that lets you know you have a task to fulfill here in this earth. Yes. Father God, I pray that you you allow us to align with the call in our lives, and you allow us to seek your face. Yes. Not just coming here on church, but daily. Because tomorrow is not promised. Yes. And whatever they're calling us, Father God, I pray that you, you tug on their heart, you convict their heart, and realize this is a testimony. The testimony is not about you, not about us, but it's about you, God. And Father God, I pray that whatever words that come from my mouth simplify the flesh and allow whatever is in me to manifest to your children, to draw them closer to you. We pray these things in your son, Jesus' name, who died for our sins. Amen. Amen. Okay, so... Fast forward, I was one of the military at 30 years old. Mind you, these young girls were running against for my uh, my test and everything else. And when I joined the military, I was in the Navy, and I realized, I was like, well, God, you got me here, but it seems like I keep hitting the wall with these rules. I'm not a rule breaker, but when it comes down to mistreating people, I don't play that at all. And I realized I've seen people, my sister, my, uh, my military sister right here, she's here, she can attest to how dysfunctional the system is when it comes down to pleasing certain people. And when I got in, I realized that my gift, I like to walk y'all some. So when I, when I realized walking in my gift, I realized that at some point in life, you have to realize you just can't go with the crowd and go against the crowd. And when somebody challenges what God has said you to do, you have to realize God doesn't want you to learn something, so you have to get out of your flesh and realize it's a spiritual effect. Yeah. A lot of things that we face in life, we have to realize it's not about the flesh. It's a spiritual warfare. And God has attempted to show y'all when it comes down to us growing within his calling for y'all. Some things when it comes down to your health, when it comes down to how you perceive, like when it comes down to being stagnant. Some people don't realize that when the enemy wants you to uh, be stagnant, when you have a calling to reach lives, he will place you in a position where you're stay, you're comfortable. Don't get comfortable where you at. Because that means that you're choosing to be where you at in order to not allow God to use you to grow. So when I got in the military, yes, it was perks, I did everything I wanted, but I realized I wasn't being fulfilled. So I was like, well, God, what you want me to do? He was 
like, well, you know what? I said, well, God, if you allow me to retire, I've been asking at 40 years old, but if you bring me close, I serve your people. God allowed me to join the military at 30, and I retired at 33. I went two years without working, didn't miss a week or anything, but God was like, hey, you remember that promise, that covenant you had with me? I need for you to work. So then, too, I had to find another church. I found a church that I'm capable of working at, and my testimony is, y'all, a lot of times God is waiting on us to align with him. And a lot of us, we have a tendency to go request something from God. But then, Lord, in the sense that we request something from God, God said, well, what, what you doing for me? I'm not a toy you can just take off the shelf. Mm. And you can just dim when you want to. I'm not a toy you can just sit up there and you can call me when you need to be healed. Because God said, I gave you, I've given you free will. And a lot of people don't realize, sometimes God blesses you through people. Yes, God said, I can give you everything, but God has to use a man to bless you. When it comes down to your bills, when it comes down to your health, it's when he's the doctors who has that calling to heal, to heal you. But then, so same thing with me, I was always trying to control who I want to pick and choose who God to use to help me. So I realized God said, no, you have to realize you have to be like Jesus. Jesus said, I went in different places preaching the gospel. I knew people, even when Judas, he knew what Jesus was going to do. But guess what? He still loved Jesus in spite right. of. Right. So sometimes you can't be picking and choosing who God's going to use to bless you. Amen. And also, too, you have to humble yourself. Like, you know what, God? It ain't about me and what I want. It's about my alignment with you. And I'm just saying, sometimes, y'all, it's hard, but you have to get out your flesh. You have to get out your flesh. You can't get so emotionally tied to your flesh. You have to realize people are here for a purpose. And if you think we're here to acquire stuff, you got a lot of work to do. So that's my testimony, and I do believe that God says, just as I am up here talking, God will give you spirit of fear. Right. And he doesn't give you a testimony just to keep it to yourself. Right. And a lot of people are always constantly going through the same cycle so because you said, God, if you deliver me, I will tell you people. How many people actually have been delivered with something when it comes down to your family, your sister, your brother, your mom, your dad, that you actually took time and testified to somebody else? Let me tell you what God did with me. If you didn't do that, God saying, well, how can I just tell people, how can I allow you and trust you with a gift, and you chose to just keep it to yourself? Wow. You can't do that. And God is like, okay, y'all keep coming with the same person. I know what you need before you ask me. But so now I need for you to testify. Tell somebody about the goodness. Every single word that them babies had that something that was, that was a testimony that some like goodness, right. favor, love, joy, happiness, you can't get that from God. Happiness not from God. Happiness from man. God said, I gave you joy. The world can't take joy from you. And it's a song that my grandma used to always sing. He said, I am a living testimony. I could have been dead and gone. But God should let me live on. I am a living testimony. And I thank the Lord I'm still alive. Not for yourself, but for God. That's right.